Number 10, Vita Radium Suppositories. Yeah. What I've discovered while making this list is that after radium was discovered, people became obsessed with it. Like the GMA and Frank's Red Hot commercials, they put that on everything. Vita radium suppositories were developed as a way of relieving our digestive systems a la radioactive material. According to this ad, these suppositories were guaranteed, guaranteed to contain radium, which is exactly the opposite of what we want to see on the back of canisters today. People believe that radium had miracle effects when it came to the human body, saying that they made you glow because they did. These pills were to be inserted into the rectum so they could be dissolved and devoured by the entire body. According to the ad, and I quote, every tissue, every organ of the body is bombarded by its health giving electric atoms. They also implied that it would increase libido. Oh wow. But the only thing that rose to the expectation was the death toll. In our number 9 spot today, we have animal mutations. There's no doubt that the Chernobyl nuclear disaster had devastating effects on all of the life in the area surrounding this meltdown. I think that's something most of us can agree on, and while most of the human life has moved out of the area, there is a lot of wildlife that remains, and those animals have taken over the exclusion zone. While scientists often observe and test these animals, it is clear that they are all contaminated in radiation, and thus have mutated in certain ways, but despite the rumors, there are in fact no three-headed cows wandering around. I think this might be one of the most popular legends floating around in terms of the Chernobyl disaster. The story that there are just full-on monsters living within the exclusion zone. Or that the meltdown happened because of a failed radiation experiment on these animals. There are tons of swirling rumors regarding the animals, but in the end, the effects of the radiation is seen much more in things like their ability to reproduce, or them not being fit for consumption, rather than in things like extra limbs and heads and eyes. In our number 8 spot today, we have the government cover up part one. Of course, a disaster like this is going to get some government conspiracies swirling around, and we've got a few of them to talk about today, so let's start off now with the first one. This little ditty suggests that the Chernobyl disaster was actually conducted by the Soviet government due to the failure of a new, at the time, huge missile defense radio structure called Duga 3. This structure, that actually exists in real life, is suspected of having been wildly over budget, and it was the source of many, many complaints after it was built. The systems were extremely powerful and broadcast in short wave radio bands. They would appear without warning and sounded like a sharp repetitive tapping noise and they would disrupt things like legitimate broadcasts, amateur radio, commercial aviation communications and utility transmissions which all led to there being international complaints and at the time people didn't know what this structure was or what the sound was. This led people to think that the signal was actually being used for things such as as Soviet mind control or weather control experiments. So this story suggests that in order to eliminate it, the nearby Chernobyl facility was allowed to go into meltdown. It seems like they probably could have done something much less lethal and much less damaging, so I'm not exactly sure how true this one could possibly be, but I do suppose that this is a list of urban legends. In our number 7 spot today we have the Chernobyl Zombies. This little legend can most likely be attributed to a video game that takes place in the exclusion zone but it is certainly not based on any real life facts, at least that we all know of. This little legend claims that after the Chernobyl disaster we of course know that unfortunately people lost their lives, but what happens if those who did then became the undead? Yep, we are obviously talking about zombies here. There are plenty of legends that suggest the exclusion zone isn't dangerous and off limits because of toxic radiation, but actually because there are brain eating zombies wandering the area. I mean, I personally have never received a lethal dose of radiation, so I cannot confirm or deny that this would turn one into a zombie, but I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one out for being fake. I mean, at least I'm really, really, really hoping it is. We've dealt with enough in the last year and a half. We really don't need to add radiation zombies onto the list. In our number six spot today, we have It Never Happened. Okay, this is probably the easiest one to disprove, but perhaps it's not. This legend suggests that the whole disaster never actually happened and that the entire thing is just conspiracy. I don't know why anyone would do that, 
but hey, this is just a legend after all. There would be so many hoops to have to jump through in order to pull off that level of a stunt and keep it up for this long. Like let's be honest, there are too many people involved for all of them to have been able to all keep the secret for this long. There's just no way everyone could keep their mouths shut. And what about the people who passed away from the event? I just have a lot of questions about this one. There are some weird legends on this list, but I do have to say that this one might be the least believable. And we just talked about zombies. Unfortunately, it seems as though the Chernobyl nuclear disaster was a very real thing that happened, and it affected a ton of people. It was certainly an event that changed the world and made us all a lot smarter when it comes to nuclear safety. I hope. In our number five spot today, we have this super secret laboratory. This legend suggests that the Chernobyl disaster was a planned event that took place for a specific reason. You may be wondering what this apparent plan is, and that would be the plan to build a super secret laboratory. I mean, think about it. You want to build a super secret place, just cause the entire place to be so terribly contaminated in radiation that no one will want to search the area. Or those who do might even meet an untimely fate. It certainly is an evil plan, but it could potentially be quite effective. I don't think that this is the case at all, and I don't think Chernobyl was a planned event in order to build a secret lab, but I do agree that whoever originated this legend has quite an imagination. What do you think this lab lab would contain if this were true? Like an Area 51 type thing? Aliens and mermaids? Or perhaps that's where they're hiding all the three eyed animals everyone keeps talking about. In our number 4 spot today we have the Chernobyl illness. This is one of the more malicious stories on this list which I do not like at all. People who lived in the region of the disaster had a huge impact on their day to day lives and a lot of people had long lasting health impacts from the entire thing. This disaster has been linked to terrible things like an increase in thyroid cancer as well as other forms of cancer. So when fake stories of a fake disease began circulating around, it was honestly super messed up. One of these fake illnesses coincided with the height of panic, misinformation and ignorance surrounding HIV and thus the totally made up condition of Chernobyl HIV was born. This made up disease was the source of many a whispered warning against friendship or relationships with those who had survived the disaster. Like like these people just survived the worst nuclear accident in history and now they have to worry about harmful schoolyard gossip? Yeah, no thanks. Despite its terrible origins, people still spread rumors and fear mongered and it truly is a cruel, cruel, entirely made up story. In our number 3 spot today we have Government Cover Up Part 2. After the release of the incredible HBO show Chernobyl, which you haven't seen it, it is a must watch. Like it is such a good show. I watched it with Che if you remember that guy and it was just unreal. Anyway, after the show's release, the Russian government released a statement saying that the show was actually anti-Soviet Union propaganda and that they would be releasing their own Chernobyl show which would detail how the CIA was actually the cause for the disaster. Rumor has it that the CIA sabotaged something which caused the reactor to melt down and the whole thing was actually America's fault. I have no way of either proving or disproving this theory or legend, but I think it's probably safe to say that someone here isn't telling the truth. And it's not like it's a new thing that Russia and the US aren't exactly getting along. Maybe it's all just propaganda or maybe there's some truth? I don't know, what do you guys think? In our number 2 spot today we have the Blackbird. People in the district of the Ukraine that houses Chernobyl have told stories of sightings of the Blackbird for years and it is perhaps the most well known legend that comes from the area. The Blackbird is a human creature with wings and piercing red eyes and it was apparently seen by workers at the Chernobyl plants on the fateful day of the nuclear disaster. After this it was reported that anyone who had seen the bird would later report suffering from terrible nightmares and begin receiving threatening phone calls. Many of the people where the legend originates from unfortunately were at the center of the disaster and have since passed away from radiation poisoning so no one is sure if the blackbird really is out there or not. The blackbird is said to be a symbol of something terrible being afoot so seeing it is 
definitely not a great thing to happen to a person. I think it's probably just another one to add to the list of reasons why maybe a Chernobyl visit isn't the best idea. In our number one spot today, we have alien cleanup. There's always got to be an alien story to keep things interesting and to add to the list of questions we have for extraterrestrials when we hopefully eventually find them, and Chernobyl is no different. Rather than the aliens causing the disaster, which might be where your mind went, instead this legend suggests that they helped in the aftermath. Apparently some people out there think that the Chernobyl disaster wasn't as bad as it should have been. I don't think they mean it in as bad of a way as that sounds, but rather they are just surprised that the amount of people who passed away in the disaster wasn't higher, considering how bad the whole ordeal actually was. This coupled with an apparent eyewitness account from a man named Mikhail Veritsky who claimed he saw a fiery ball of light hovering for a few minutes above the exposed reactor on the night of the incident has led people to speculate that maybe our friendly alien neighbors swooped down in the nick of time to help clean up the mess that was made. Apparently this ball of light was also seen on September 16th. 1989 when there was more radiation leaking from the unit at Chernobyl, which some claim was the aliens containing the radiation. Honestly, I'd like to think that this one is true because what a nice thing for the aliens to do. They probably have their own nuclear weapons, so they certainly didn't need ours, and we didn't really have the tools to clean it up, so I can definitely appreciate the fact that they lended a helping hand. At number 10 now, with the Hanford site, USA. In Washington state lies Hanford. Hanford site where in 1943 a nuclear reactor was responsible for producing the plutonium used in America's first nuclear bombs. The decades of production that followed was done in very unsafe conditions by today's standards and a lot of radioactive material was leaked into the surrounding air and river. In fact, an estimated 53 million US gallons of radioactive waste was left in the tanks and contaminated groundwater spread for up to 200 miles around. In fact, this one site alone is thought to contain about two thirds of America's radioactive waste. Moving on to number nine, we have the Taylor Energy Spill. If you guys are liking this video so far, then smash that like button for me, the Christmas Cowgirl. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of this, but chances are you haven't, because this oil spill was kept pretty hush hush. Hardly anyone outside of Louisiana knew what went down. That's because they wanted to keep it all a secret in order to protect the company's reputation. Basically, back in 2004, an oil production platform sank in a mudslide after Hurricane Ivan struck. It said that 300 to 700 barrels of oil per day spewed from this site. This has been going on for more than 14 years. The spill was hidden for six of these years before an environmental group stumbled upon it and was like, What's going on here? Why is there oil seeping here? This is close to being one of the worst oil spills in US history. Like millions of barrels have leaked into the Gulf of Mexico, polluting the waters. To be more precise, they estimated that the spill leaked 140 million gallons of oil which is insane. In our 8th spot we have Sellafield UK. Back in the day during the Cold War, Sellafield was the site where weapon grade nuclear material was produced for the UK's nuclear weapon program. However, in 1957, one of the wind scale piles caught on fire and 11 tons of uranium was on fire for three days. As a result, radioactive material started spreading across the Lake District. It was deemed Britain's worst nuclear accident. On top of that, no one was evacuated and no one received iodine pills. Why? Well, workers were told to keep it all under wraps and to just keep working like nothing happened. Things continued on until they found out that like golf courses, milk and chickens among other things were getting contaminated. That's when they were forced to tell the public about this. To this day, this place is considered one of the most radioactive places in the world. In our seventh spot, we have the Halifax explosion. This is said to be the deadliest industrial disaster in Canada. It occurred on December 6, 1917, when a cargo ship filled with war explosives collided with another ship in the Halifax Harbor. The collision caused a massive explosion. 2,000 innocent people lost their lives. 9,000 were injured by the explosion and the flying debris and collapsing buildings. Others were killed by fires that scorched the area from the explosion. On top of that, a plume of black, thick smoke filled and polluted the air. Moving on to number six, we have the reactive zone of Paris. 
During the 1920s to 1930s, a number of radioactive tests were done in this area. The tests involved salts of radium-226. They were carried out safely until the French army decided to take over, and they ended up seriously contaminating the area, and they never disposed of the radioactive waste properly. In the 1990s, 61 barrels of cesium-137 and radium-226 were found stored there. On top of that, there was 160,000 gallons of contaminated soil. Over the years, the area has been decontaminated, or at least they tried to. It never really worked. And in 2006, more contaminated areas were found. The whole time, the area was so radioactive and the French army tried to keep it all a secret, but the people living nearby suffered. A high percentage of people living in the surrounding areas were found to have cancer. Although they denied that this site had anything to do with it, it seems quite obvious that it does. To this day, this place is considered the most radioactive zone on the planet. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the contaminated hospital. Back in September of 1987, two individuals broke into an abandoned hospital in Brazil. They then were going around taking some things, hoping that they could resell it and get some money. Some things that they stole were parts from a teletherapy unit. Little did they know that what they took home was highly radioactive. That night, the two men fell ill and began throwing up. Over the course of the next couple of days, things got worse. In fact, one of the men had his hand swell and he had to get it partially amputated. But they didn't know what was making them sick. Plus, they didn't really want to tell people like, oh hey, we broke into a hospital and stole some stuff, so they kept it all a secret. And then one of the guys actually dismantled this radioactive object and was like, oh, what do we have in here? He ended up spreading cesium over a large area. As a result, four people died and 250 others were injured from exposure to the radioactive materials. A total of 112,000 people were exposed to the radioactive material. On top of that, the men's homes were demolished because they were so contaminated, and a number of other areas had to be decontaminated. To this day, this is said to be one of the world's worst nuclear disasters and one of the world's worst radiological incidents. In our fourth spot, we have the Exxon Valdez oil spill. On March 24th, 1989, one of the worst man-made disasters in US history took place. So on this day, an oil tanker owned by Exxon Shipping Company spilled 11 million gallons of crude oil into Prince William Sound. So just after midnight that day, the ship hit a reef. The collision caused the ship's hull to tear open and all that oil spilled into the water. Turns out that the captain of Exxon Valdez was drinking at the time of this event and also was not qualified to steer such a massive ship. This spill impacted 13,000 miles of coastline. It killed hundreds of thousands of birds, otters, seals, whales, you name it. Even to this day, this area is still heavily polluted. And to think it could have been easily avoided had they had a different captain of the ship. And most like the other disasters on this list, the company tried to keep it all hush hush, but in the end, the truth revealed itself. Coming in at number three, we have the North Korea nuclear accident. North Korea is a very secretive country. It's hard to know what really goes on there. What we do know though, is that North Korea is openly creating nukes and missiles and experimenting with these nuclear weapons. According to a number of articles, one of these tests in 2017 didn't go so well. 200 nuclear workers were killed at Kim Jong-un's testing facility. Basically, they're doing so much nuclear testing that the ground just can't take it anymore. I mean, in 2018, a mountain collapsed after more nuclear testing. But anyways, in this case, an unfinished tunnel collapsed, killing 100 workers. Then 100 more workers died after trying to rescue the first group. Now, this disaster is nowhere near as bad as Chernobyl, but I put this on this list because experts are scared and have predicted that in the future, the nuclear testing facility will most likely crumble. And when it does, a radioactive leak will occur, and it's said to be even worse than Chernobyl. So they're on the path to a very bad nuclear explosion or leak. In our second spot, we have the Bhopal disaster, also referred to as the Bhopal gas tragedy. This was a gas leak that occurred on the night of December 2nd to the morning of December 3rd in 1984. It occurred at the Union Carbide India Limited pesticide plant in Bhopal, India. Apparently, the pipes were lacking routine maintenance and that caused a backflow of water into a tank containing methyl isocyanate gas. 
That's what caused this gas leak. This is said to be one of the world's worst industrial disasters. Over 500,000 people were exposed to this gas. It seeped into the town surrounding the plant. It said that the death toll was 2,259, but later it was revealed to be much higher with 3,787 deaths. Some even believe it was up to 8,000 deaths, but the government is concealing the true number of deaths from this tragedy. On top of that, over 500,000 people were left injured, including nearly 4,000 permanent injuries. And in our number one spot today, we have the Kishchim disaster. On September 29th, 1950, an explosion occurred at a plutonium production site for nuclear weapons and nuclear fuel reprocessing plant in Russia. It was built during the late 1940s as part of a Soviet program to develop nuclear weapons. It was a secret facility that people did not know about. Well, on that day, the cooling system containing radioactive waste failed and no one even noticed. The waste started to heat up and eventually exploded at 350 degrees Celsius. 20 million curries of radioactive material flung into the sky. It got picked up by the wind and spread over an area of 20,000 square kilometers. 270,000 people were living in the affected areas. And what's worse is that the Soviet government refused to let people know what happened. No one evacuated and hundreds of people died from the radioactivity of the area. Hundreds of others suffered from radiation sickness. It wasn't until 1989 that the Soviet government acknowledged what happened. At least in Chernobyl, people were told what went down and then were forced to evacuate. Starting off this countdown, we have Fukushima. Due to the Fukushima nuclear disaster, Japan is said to be one of the world's most radioactive places. In 2011, an earthquake triggered a tsunami that ended up flooding the nuclear power plant and knocking out emergency generators. The power plant survived the earthquake, but the tsunami was twice as powerful as the plant was designed to tolerate. It led to the plant's three reactors leaking radioactive materials everywhere. The the material contaminated wastewater and leaked into the Pacific Ocean. As a result, this is considered the most severe nuclear accident since Chernobyl. To this day, people are still cleaning up the nuclear waste and contaminated water there. In fact, 1.25 million tons of radioactive water is currently being stored at Fukushima. What's scary is that next year they won't be able to store anymore, so they're looking at releasing it into the sea. Obviously, it will be treated first, but still, it won't be good for the marine life or the water. At number 9, we have missing silver filters. Remember those pile of creepy dolls? Yeah, of course you do. It literally just freaking happened. Well, in addition to the piles of dead dolls, there are also piles of old gas masks everywhere, especially in one old school classroom. Some cheeky and hilarious sick person even put some of these masks on dolls. Isn't that great? Anyway, what is mysterious about these gas masks is that these filters inside of all of them have been removed. And these filters contain just a small amount of silver in them. And what is most likely what happened is that looters came and took all of them. But what was done with the silver? No one really knows. If looters did indeed steal them, then I'm guessing that somewhere out there some people have radioactive jewelry or even silverware because they most likely sold it. It's hard to say, but if any of you watching have your own Geiger meters at home right now, I would check it out on anything silver in your home because you might just have a Chernobyl souvenir without even knowing it. At number 8 we have Survivor Immortality. While this one doesn't take place in Chernobyl exactly, it stems from Chernobyl. One Russian scientist who survived the explosion back in 1986 and six other Russian scientists have recently relocated to the small Greek island of Gados. There is some conspiracy though because some believe that these scientists actually relocated to the island to become immortal. Gavdos has 50 residents in total on the island and it is believed to have mythical healing powers that make its residents immortal. Reporters from Vice interviewed a filmmaker who was making a documentary on the island and found out that the scientists work on various inventions from inside the local compound. They also have 7 acres of land that that was given to them by a priest. Some think these Russian scientists are spies, while others believe they moved out there to not only become immortal themselves, but also clear them of all the radiation using the mystical powers of the island. They are apparently also building a temple named the Temple of Apollo. I think these guys were a little too close to the blast, if you know what I mean. At number 7 we have the random examination chair. Out in the middle of a wooded area in the exclusion zone is a random gynecologist's chair. How the hell did it get there? <laughs> 
No one freaking knows. It can only be assumed that this chair was picked up by some local pranksters who went through the trouble of picking up this radioactive artifact and brought it to a random spot in the woods. But that is so much freaking work. I mean, guys, why? Aside from that, every other possibility is straight up terrifying. Maybe the blast blasted the chair out in the forest, but if it did, then why was there one of these chairs so close to a freaking radioactive reactor? See, it, it, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So it's just another unproven, less than appealing site that can be found in the exclusion zone. At number six, we have silhouettes. You may remember this one from one of my other Chernobyl videos too. The mystery here is we have no idea if these silhouettes are actually based on real people or if it's just a morbid art piece done by another Chernobyl creepy artist. New silhouettes show up all of the time, all over the town of Pripyat, and the only other mystery here is who is behind it? Is it one talented artist or is it a group that has decided to take turns so no one ever gets the true answer? No matter what, these things sure do add to the creep factor of this ghost town, and I'm sure it's also a terrifying sight to see at night. Coming in at our halfway point at number five, we have a Chernobyl cover up. In a documentary titled The Russian Woodpecker, Fodor Alexandrovich explains a conspiracy theory that the Chernobyl blast was actually orchestrated to cover up the failure of the Russian Woodpecker. Now, it wasn't a Russian bird or the Russian version of Woody the Woodpecker. The Russian Woodpecker was actually an array radar that was meant to detect missiles before they were launched. The device was named after its woodpecker like sound it would make during its operation. It cost 7 billion rubles and unfortunately did not work. It is suspected that it didn't work because of the northern lights messing with its signals, but it can't be for certain. So instead of suffering this terrible embarrassment, the Chernobyl plant that was known for its instability blew up, distracting everyone from the failure of the woodpecker. It's hard to say how likely all of this is, but when shooting the woodpecker documentary, apparently some pretty weird stuff happened to the documentary crew, such as visits from secret police services, as well as even one crew member being shot by a hidden sniper during the Euro Maiden protests. Whatever the truth is here, it sounds like they were putting their nose where it wasn't wanted. At number four, we have no containment building. Back in 1986, when the Chernobyl explosion actually happened, there was quite mysteriously no containment building that surrounded the reactors. Usually there are containment structures around radioactive places like the reactors located in Chernobyl. They are gas tight structures that are usually made of steel reinforced concrete so it can confine fission products that could release into the atmosphere during an accident if one were to happen. Sure enough, we all know that one happened here and interestingly enough, it was not prepared for an accident that dangerous. According to author Richard Mueller of the book Physics for Future Presidents, the science behind the headlines, if there would have been a containment unit around the reactors, Mueller believes that there would have been virtually no deaths. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if this coincides with any of the conspiracy of the Russian woodpecker as mentioned before. Maybe. Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have alien saviors. In this case, they quite literally came in peace. An eyewitness by the name of Mikhail Varitsky claimed to have seen a large fireball of light hovering above the reactor on the night of the explosion. Later on September 16th in 1989, apparently there was another huge radiation leak, and it is reported that this same ball of light was seen in the exact same spot once again. Many believe it to be aliens that were actually protecting us from the radioactive blast. Some claim that the blast was nowhere near as big as what it could have been and that these aliens actually helped absorb and clean up whatever extra radiation that they could to save us. You know me, I'm all about the alien theories, but I'm not sure about this one. I will say, many say similar events happened during the Fukushima accident as well. Oh well, aliens, if you are listening to me right now and you did help us, thank you. Now, show yourself. At number two, we had the Blackbird of Chernobyl. In April of 1986, right before the explosion in July, many reported seeing a large creature that looked like a blackbird flying around Chernobyl. This creature was large with red glowing eyes and was compared to America's legend, the Mothman. Why? What's so similar between a large Mothman and a large blackbird? Well, both of these creatures had large glowing red eyes as well as both showed up right before major events. The Mothman appeared and was spotted right before the Silver Bridge collapse in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Virginia in 1967, which reportedly killed 46 people. Some survivors of the Chernobyl blast reported seeing this giant scary creature fly away from the reactor after the blast. Many believe that this bird was a paranormal entity that was a harbinger of terrible things to come. Others believe it was just a large stork. I don't know what to believe here, but the idea of a giant paranormal creature that is similar to the one that was seen in the US 20 years before gives me goosebumps in the best way possible. I love monster and ghost lore, which is what brings us to our 
number one spot. And finally, coming in at number one, we have my favorite, ghosts. That's right, not just named a ghost town because it's abandoned, but also because there are many different spirits that are said to be found here. Andrei Karsukov, a nuclear physicist from New York, told one story after his visit to the area back in 1997. Karsukov reports that he went to the power station one day at 7.30 a.m. and visited the number four reactor in the sarcophagus. You know, the big containment unit structure that they should have had on there before the explosion? Yeah, that thing. Thing. Well, he could not go inside due to the high levels of radiation, but once he was down there, he could hear screams coming from the inside due to a fire. So what did he do? He ran upstairs to the control room to get help, and once he barged open the door, he was told that he was the first person to open that door in three years. He was also told that the only way in was where he was, and if someone came in after him, they would have tripped the alarm. So it was impossible for anyone else to be down there except him. There was also a floodlight that turned on and off at very strange moments, leading the crew to believe someone one or something was in the building with them. Starting off this countdown, we have the Three Mile Island nuclear accident. This disaster is said to be the most serious nuclear accident in US history. It took place at the Three Mile Island plant in Pennsylvania. At 4 a.m. on March 28, 1979, a number of equipment failures took place. A pressure valve in one of the reactors failed to close, so the cooling water contaminated with radiation was draining into other buildings. And then the control operators didn't know how to deal with this, and soon the reactor heated to over 4,000 degrees, and radioactive steam seeped out of the building. Although no deaths or injuries were reported, it's believed that this leak caused a number of cancers and infant deaths in the area. Of course, the company downplayed the event. They were like, oh, nothing really happened here. No, 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 no radiation leaked out. But that's not the case. In the end, only pregnant women and small children were told to evacuate the area. But those that stayed suffered the consequences. Moving on at number nine, we have the Dugway Proving Ground. Located in Utah, the Dugway Proving Ground is the main biological and chemical weapons testing site for the US Army. During 1949 to 1952, four major types of radiation weapons tests took place there. First, we got the cluster bombs. Cluster bombs weighed about a ton each and they were dropped from airplanes flying at 20,000 feet. They then would explode when they reached 800 feet above the ground, spreading radioactive particles everywhere. These tests released between 1,500 to 30,000 curries of radiation each. Then we have the small pellet tests. Again, this involved dropping small radioactive pellets over the area from a high altitude. Then we have the radioactive specks. Basically, a dust generator would fly over the area and spew radioactive specks all over that area. They also tested exploding radioactive metal in different shapes to see what would spread the contamination the best. Each test released about 100 curries of radiation. In our 8 spot today we have the abandoned hospital in Brazil. Now we'll be talking about an abandoned hospital site in Brazil that used to perform radiation therapy for cancer patients. On September 13th in 1987, a bunch of individuals broke into the abandoned hospital and stole some parts from a teletherapy unit thinking it would be worth some money. Little did they know that they took home something highly radioactive. That night Upon bringing it home, the two men became very sick and threw up. In the following days, the two men became worse and worse. One of the men actually had his hand swell and he had to get it partially amputated. Little did they know what was causing this. While this was all happening, they gave this radioactive piece of equipment to a number of different people. In fact, one of the guys even dismantled it, spreading cesium all over a large area. In the end, four people died as a result of this incident and 250 others were injured from exposure to radioactive contamination. A cleanup crew was sent to decontaminate the area. Topsoil was removed in several areas and a number of houses were demolished. To this day, it's said to be one of the world's worst nuclear disasters and one of the world's worst radiological incident. In our seventh spot, we have Hanford Site. Located in Washington, D.C., the Hanford Site is said to be one of the world's most radioactive places. So during the Cold War, the U.S. used this site as its main plutonium production facility for their nuclear weapons. In the end, they produced an of plutonium for around 60,000 nuclear weapons, including the plutonium that was used in the Fat Man bomb that was dropped on Nagasaki in 1945. Now this place has since been decommissioned, but still contains about 60% of high level radioactive waste. Most of the waste has been buried underground, but that wasn't a good decision because large areas of groundwater have since become contaminated. Coming in at number 6 we have D'Abervilliers, Paris. During the 1920s to 1930s, two individuals, Frederick and Irene Joliet Curry conducted a number of studies on radioactivity in this area.
area. In particular, they were experimenting with salts of radium 226. Later on, the French army took over these experiments and they seriously contaminated the fort. In the 1990s, 61 barrels of cesium 137 and radium 226 were found stored there, as well as about 160,000 gallons of contaminated soil. Over the years, they have tried to decontaminate the area. But in 2006, more contaminated areas were uncovered. People in the area were being exposed to radioactivity and they didn't even know it. In fact, a high percentage of people living in the surrounding area were found to have cancer. Although they deny that this site has anything to do with it, it seems quite obvious that it does. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Anna Wee Talk Island. This island is part of the Marshall Islands in the Pacific Ocean. In 1946 up until 1958, the US government conducted 67 nuclear tests in the Marshall Islands. In 1951, the first ever hydrogen bomb was tested there. As a result, a number of atolls got contaminated including Anna Wee Talk. In fact, it's said that the Marshall Islands to this day are still more radioactive than Chernobyl and Fukushima. Isn't that insane? So when testing the soil, researchers found that the island had toxic levels 10 to 1000 times higher than the soil in Fukushima. And it's about 10 times more toxic than the soil found in Chernobyl. On top of that, the government said that this is a cause for great concern. The US government had to relocate an entire population because it was exposing them to cancer and other illnesses due to the radiation. But people still live there despite this huge concern. In 1980, hundreds of people gathered on this island and participated in a radioactive cleanup. But still, the levels on this island are highly unsafe. Coming in at number 4 we have Wrong Lap Atoll. Surprise surprise, another dangerously radioactive atoll located on the Marshall Islands. Researchers have found that this island has the highest levels of external gamma radiation than all of the islands they examined in the study. Soil samples from the area also expose that they have high concentrations of radioactive isotopes. Not only that, but researchers also found that the fruits on the islands contained more cesium-137 than is permitted by safety standards. And some of the islands also contained more cesium-137 than Chernobyl ever had. In our third spot today, we have Sellafield, United Kingdom. This is another place that has been given the name one of the world's most radioactive places. Back in the day during the Cold War, Sellafield was the site where weapon grade nuclear materials were produced for the UK's nuclear weapon program. However, in 1957, one of the wind scale pipes caught on fire and 11 tons of uranium was on fire for three days. As a result, radioactive materials started spreading across the Lake District. It was deemed Britain's worst nuclear accident. On top of that, no one evacuated and no one received iodine pills. In fact, some people didn't even know about the fire. They tried to keep it all hush hush. And workers were just told to keep on working. That was until they found that golf courses, milk, and chickens, among other things, were getting contaminated. To this day, the plant releases around 2.3 million gallons of contaminated waste into the sea on a daily basis. In fact, this has made the Irish sea the most radioactive sea in the world. Moving on to number 2 we have the Siberian Chemical Combine. This is another place contaminated by high levels of radiation. Located in Russia, this was one of the production facilities used to produce nuclear products for the Soviet nuclear weapons program. But after the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, the facility stopped its production of plutonium and uranium. But to this day, this combine keeps on contaminating underground waters. This has to do with the explosion that took place on April 6, 1990. As a result of the explosion, tens of thousands of people were exposed to high levels of radiation and contaminated air, water, and soil. In fact, it's said that 10 grams of plutonium is released into the atmosphere there each year. In 2008, a study of the area found increased levels of plutonium and cesium-137 in soils and water samples, suggesting the plant is still leaking. And in our number one spot today, we have the Bikini Atoll. This is another atoll located in the Marshall. Islands. Turns out that depending on how long you stay there, you could get exposed to as much radiation as you would get from 1 to 64 chest x rays. That's insane. So in 1954, this area was the site for the US's largest hydrogen bomb test. The blast from this bomb was thousands of times more powerful as the bombs dropped on Japan during World War II. As a result, Bikini Island is said to have the highest.
highest levels of radiation in all of the Marshall Islands. In fact, in 1946, residents were forced to relocate. So they were actually shipped around to a number of different islands. They kept moving these people around because of lack of water and food sources. Then in the 1960s, the government said that the islands were safe to live on again and they were no longer radioactive, which was not the case. And they soon found the levels of radiation were still dangerously high, so everyone had to leave again. In fact, this location is said to be more radioactive than Chernobyl and Fukushima. Starting us off at number 10 are Dewey's old favorite dolls. Remember this one? Yeah, so in case you missed a few of our other Chernobyl videos, there are large piles of creepy, most likely possessed, burned up, radioactive dolls everywhere. Where are they coming from? Well, odds are most of these are actually coming from tourists and people looking to grab that one spooky and scary pick for the gram, but no one knows how this all came to be. It's hard to know if this started from actual dolls that witnessed the explosion or if someone just had the bright idea one day to start adding messed up dolls all over the exclusion zone. In the end, we will never know because unless you are a regular there at the exclusion zone, it's hard to distinguish which dolls have been there since day one and which ones are new additions. Either way, I hate all of it. Number nine, radioactive toy set. Gilbert U 238 Atomic Energy Lab was the hottest thing to hit toy stores in the 1950s for a hefty price. The toy set cost was $50 because it was actually radioactive. $50 was a steep price to pay back then. Meanwhile, I can spend that in like a day living here. So fortunately, a lot of parents bought more affordable science sets that didn't have radioactive stuff. The toy, as a result, was discontinued not because it was actually poisonous, but because no one could afford it. Some say it was safe for children to use as it was very carefully constructed, but you know, put it in the hands of like a nine year old boy. <laughs> Iffy. The Atomic Energy Lab contained a cloud chamber in which you could see alpha particles traveling at 12,000 miles a second. That would be pretty cool. Like, if I was that kid and I didn't know what was going on, I totally would be like, Mom, I want that for Christmas. I would have a blast. Pretty impressive, but definitely something rated for kids like 40 and up with, a, with maybe a science degree and like a lab suit. Number eight, Perpetual Sunshine. And no, that's not my nickname, but if you wanna call me that, go for it. Wouldn't it be cool if we all glowed like Alina in Shadow and Bone? Yeah, it definitely would. But like, if someone offers you any kind of radioactive substance, like run, get out of here. Radithor was yet another cure-all remedy said to cure everything under the sun, the deadliest snake oil out there. But I should say, we do use radiation today for things like cancer, but we know more or less what we're doing with it now. Radithor was a patent medicine that featured distilled water and two isotopes of radium. Perpetual sunshine in a bottle is what advertisers called it. And it was one of many radioactive of elixirs on the market, but sadly, the more a star glows, the faster it burns out. A popular Radiothor advocate in 1932 eventually developed holes in his bones, skull, and his entire jaw had to be removed. Still, the man sadly died due to radiation poisoning, so not the miracle cure people thought it was. Unless you didn't like him, that's dark. <laughs> That's very dark. Okay. Number seven, Thoradia. From cancerous white face powder to radioactive cream, beauty really does kill. I wonder how much of my makeup on my face um, is slowly killing me. Joke, not a joke. I don't know. <laughs> Thoradia was another deadly beauty product introduced by a Parisian beauty company that was all the rage. It boasted having thorium and radium lead to help stabilize and promote blood circulation, tone the facial tissues, eliminate fat and remove wrinkles. Product toured Belgium, Italy, Portugal, Romania, Egypt, and of course, France. Radium's energy was useful as far as creating a natural luminous appearance, but in 1937, the French government put a massive restriction on the sale of products that contained thorium and radium, forcing them to stop using the ingredients. Like, it was almost as if the government was catching on to some not so dewy glow side effects. Beyond cosmetic, the cream was also recommended for scrapes, bruises, herpes, frostbite, you name it. Some clients might not have seen the effects of these chemicals right away, but their later ailments definitely had a relationship to the miracle cure makeup. Number six, radioactive shoe sizers. Why use a measuring tape or those like cool metal feet slidey things when you can just use a nuclear bomb? Okay, well not a nuclear bomb, more like a whole bunch of radioactive materials. I'm honestly just as surprised as you are. I had no idea we were this obsessed with radium for 
this long. The shoe fitting fluoroscope was a revolutionary new device that changed the way people have their feet measured because apparently rulers didn't work. Despite scientists getting severely injured during the creation of the device, shoe stores adored it. Parents would take their growing little boys and girls to the counter to have their feet scientifically sized. They put their feet into the x-ray fluoroscope and the salesman and customer would see the bones in their foot. The customers also got a healthy dose of radiation. What a deal. Fortunately though, by the 1950s these machines were recognized as dangerous and slowly banned state by state until 1970s though Europe continued to use them because they're chic. But decades before bans came into question the dangers of radiation were already public. In the 1920s x-ray pioneers suffered very gruesome and very public deaths. Actual data didn't appear until the 1940s and nobody listened until the aforementioned date. But hey, at least they knew they were a size 7.5 56 over a 7.5 shoe. That's helpful. Number five, radioactive toothpaste. Everyone wants to have a smile that lights up a room. Yeah, radioactive toothpaste, a joy for dentists around the world. So we know by now that people freak out at radium for breakfast because they were convinced it could cure everything, even bad yellow teeth. A German company called Our Company wanted to get out of the steadily building war business, so they came out with thorium toothpaste in order to divert their supplies away from the Yahtzee, evil German people. Nuclear initiatives, especially after they knew Germany was going to lose the war. Marketed as the scientific toothpaste, they advertise that the radioactive chemicals will be able to hinder the bacteria in the mouth, which I guess would be technically true, therefore creating healthier teeth. But unfortunately, the opposite was true. Like rotting away. It was awful. Number four, the trico system. Look. I hate waxing too. I hate it. I've tried it twice and to this day I refuse to put myself through that kind of pain for a bikini pic. Look, I'm just not gonna do it. It's the worst. I get it. It's a struggle. A struggle the trico system was eager to solve. And it did, kind of. The trico system was a hair removal device that became a must have in every hair salon in the 1920s. It would remove hair painlessly. All you had to do was sit at a mahogany desk and face a window. When the flip was switched there was no burning, just a slight hum from the machine and boom, no unwanted hairs. Except there were some horrendous side effects. Yes, it would remove the hair, but soon women and men would develop cancerous ulcers, carcinoma, and death. The reason they were using x ray technology, which is, as we know, radioactive. It would be administered to the skin for a few times and would require anywhere from 15 to 20 treatments to be effective. When the trico machine was leased out, however, there was no mention of what the technology they used was, and the person administering it wasn't very well qualified either, right? Clients were just marveled that it worked so well until it slowly burned their face off. So, bottom line, if someone says anything is a miracle cure, just uh, maybe like, scream at them and run. Number three, the radium girls. This story breaks my heart. It's so sad. Uh, the radium girls became so radioactive that if you stand on their graves today with a Geiger counter, it will still jump like 80 years later. Small town girls from New Jersey were hired by a local factory to paint clock faces of luminous watches. How did they glow, you ask? Well, with glow in the dark, radioactive paint. They painted 250 dials on average daily, and in order to ensure that their lines were clean, they would lick the end before dipping it into the paint every few times. They were paid in pennies, around 27 cents per watch today. That, that's what it kind of breaks down to. So they worked tirelessly, each day swallowing more and more paint. Slowly but surely, the girls were eaten from the inside, their bones dissolving with each stroke of their brush. In the 1920s, 4,000 workers were hired by the US and Canada. The inventor of the glow-in-the-dark paint himself died of radioactive exposure. The first death of the girls, though, was Molly Magia, died after suffering burning ulcers and agonizing aches, her jawbone dissolved, and so on. The USRC covered it up, saying they weren't responsible, until dozens more died via extreme tumors and horrific other illnesses resulting from the radium. Number two, Marie Curie. Marie Curie was a brilliant scientist, a pioneer in many ways for women in the field. Her primary accomplishment was expanding our knowledge of radioactivity. But they didn't take any of the precautions we now know to take today. In fact, Marie and her husband Pierre were both buried in lead caskets to contain the radiation they accumulated in their bodies while alive. Even their furniture was 
was radioactive. Marie discovered two new elements, radium as I've mentioned and polonium and was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. Using the new discovery of radium, Curry discovered it could be used as the gamma ray source in x-ray technology, advancing the field. She also invented smaller more portable x-rays that medics could use on the battlefields. However the Currys overlooked what prolonged exposure to radiation could do. She even used to carry tubes of radium in her pockets. In the 1920s it finally caught up to her. Her health started to deteriorate rapidly and developed a severe form of leukemia. She passed away on July 4th 1934. Pierre died years earlier in 1906 from an accident in the street he was run over by a horse drawn cart. Because he was so young though his body held on to more radioactive materials so his body was actually more radioactive by the end than Marie's was because by that point it would have run through. Interesting. but. Terrifying. And last but not least, you knew this was coming the atom bomb. Hands up if you think every world leader should get rid of their nuclear devices. But they won't, sadly, which is a terrifying thought. After all, no one buys a weapon without having a plan to use it. And if you look at the aftermath of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, well, one of us is going to be next. The bomb at Hiroshima destroyed two thirds of the city's building in a flash of light and killed 60,000 by the end of 1945. Some were killed directly, others years later due to their injuries. Decades later, survivors of the bombings were still pulling debris from beneath their skin, like little shards of glass, as well as enduring horrific medical conditions like cancer, kidney diseases. The list goes on. Three days after Hiroshima, they dropped another on Nagasaki. Today, the cities have found new life and would hardly be recognized after 75 years. However, the memories of what happened remain and how could they forget? Hibakusha is the term used for survivors of both Hiroshima and Nagasaki and many like Hiroshi Hirata take action for disarmament and advocate for world peace. Of course they didn't know what we know now, but it sure makes you wonder what we will wish we had known today. <laughs> Definitely for sure. Starting off in our number 10 spot we have Chernobyl ghosts. While you can visit certain parts of Chernobyl today that have been deemed safe, taking a trip may not be for everyone, or perhaps it's too far, or whatever hundred reasons there are for not wanting to visit the site. But with the technology we have now, there's another way you can visit the site, and that is through trusty old Google Maps. Many internet people have walked through the streets of the exclusion zone searching around, seeing what photos Google Maps holds, but with those virtual tours comes something that is absolutely terrifying people, and that is the apparent sighting of what is referred to as the ghosts of Chernobyl. Many people have reported seeing shadowy figures and sometimes even faces in the abandoned buildings left in the exclusion zone. And I have to admit, some of the screenshots I've seen are pretty terrifying. Do you believe that these are real ghosts caught on camera, or is it just a legend like many of the other things that we have on today's list? All right, next up at number nine now, we have the Mediterranean Sea. Now, I know what you're thinking how could this beautiful body of water that separates Europe and Africa be dangerous? It looks lovely. Well, apparently, those calm waters are covering what could be one of the biggest nuclear disasters of all time. It's thought that an Italian mafia gang has been secretly dumping nuclear waste there for money since 1994. The extent of how much has been dumped has only recently started to come to light, and some people claim they are still still doing it to this day. Either way, there are thought to be hundreds of barrels at the bottom of the sea containing radioactive waste and if they do break, their contents will devastate the entire region. Incredibly, we're going to be staying with the same Italian mafia now for round number 8 because they've also been doing the exact same thing on the coast of Somalia. Some estimated 600 drum barrels of toxic radioactive waste from all over Europe is thought to have been dumped here by the mafia. It's thought that Somalians lack of government regulation attracted the criminals who knew they could probably get away with all of this and it seems like they pretty much have. In 2004 a tsunami there washed up rusty barrels of toxic waste that seemed to date back to the 1990s. Alright moving on to number 7 now we have Sellafield in the UK. This nuclear site has produced many tons of radioactive plutonium but an estimated quarter of a ton of the stuff has ended up in the nearby Irish sea over the years making it the most radioactive sea on the planet. There have been a number of accidents there including when radioactive water started spreading into the surrounding land. They finally did manage to plug that leak though. 
50 years later. Yeah. Despite plugging that leak, the radioactive waste has actually spread so far that a study done in the 1990s found traces of plutonium in children's teeth from all over the UK. And surprise, surprise, the closer they lived to Sellafield, the more plutonium they had in their teeth. Hmm. Now, radioactive teeth might sound like some sort of cool new superhero movie, but uh, yeah, it's actually a little bit more dangerous than that. All right, next up at number six now, we have the Mayak Chemical Combine. Back in the 1950s, the Soviet Union set up this site to produce plutonium and uranium for their nuclear weapons program. Now, their method of disposing the radioactive waste from here was basically to just mix it with water and pump it into the nearby river. Now, most of us aren't scientists, but I bet we can all agree that's not a really good idea. There's sound like one. When that started to get too polluted, they then tried to store the waste under a lake, but when a drought evaporated the water, it exposed tons of waste and the winds spread it across 900 square miles. The radiation is thought to have affected about a million Russians living nearby, and when the plant was finally closed, the average male lifespan there was just 45 years old. Coming in at number five now, it's Melu Su in Kyrgyzstan. Now this site was also set up by the Soviet Union to mine for uranium ore and it did just that, producing an estimated 10,000 metric tons of the stuff from 1946 to 1948. The radioactive waste rock was then left behind and it wasn't just one or two or like 10 rocks, it was about 1.96 million cubic meters of radioactive waste rock. And do you know what the worst bit is for the hundreds of thousands of people that lived in that surrounding area? Well, earthquakes happen there, and that radioactive rock ends up all over the place. In fact, in 2005, 300,000 cubic meters of it fell into a nearby river. Nasty, nasty stuff. But it's not all that bad, guys, because they did manage to make a few nuclear bombs out of all of this. So, yay. Moving on to number four now, we have the Polygon in Kazakhstan. Now, you're not gonna believe this, guys, but hold on, guess who built this? the Soviet Union. I know, mental. The Polygon is where the Soviet Union tested its nuclear weapons, and by testing, I mean they blew up nuclear bombs right there. Over the 40 years from 1949 to 1989, they tested their first nuclear bomb here and liked it so much, they went on to drop 455 more. Now this site was chosen to become a nuclear wasteland because they said it was uninhabited, despite an estimated 700,000 people living there. Hmm. Well, perhaps it was the Soviet Union's goal to make it uninhabited because an estimated 200,000 people have now had their health damaged by the leftover radiation. All right, coming in at number three now, we have the Siberian Chemical Combine in Russia, which was actually set up by the French. I'm just kidding, of course, obviously it's the Soviet Union. Now they produced materials for nuclear weapons for almost 40 years before being turned into a storage site for radioactive material. On April 6, 1993, a tank that contained a radioactive mixture exploded. It destroyed a large part of the building and the toxic gas was quickly spread by the wind over 200 square kilometers. As for the rest of the waste there, well, an estimated 125 thousand tons of it are just sitting there, uncovered, and the radiation is thought to be spreading into the frozen land around, to the point where the icy temperatures and the wild animals of Siberia probably aren't the only thing that could kill you. All right, next up at number two now, we have a very famous site on our list. It's Chernobyl in Ukraine. Now, this was the site of the worst nuclear power plant accident in history. Due to very poor design features and lack of safety procedures, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant entered a complete meltdown on Saturday the 26th of April 1986. The explosion caused a huge cloud of radioactive smoke to drift over most of Europe. The fire was eventually put out and the smoke did eventually dissipate, but the site of the explosion has remained highly radioactive ever since. Tens of thousands of people were evacuated from the area, leaving it a pretty much radioactive ghost town. The International Nuclear Event Scale ranks disasters like this from level one up to level seven. The Chernobyl disaster is one of only two two events in the world to be classified at level seven. The other is actually our number one most radioactive place on Earth, Fukushima in Japan. On March the 11th, 2011, an earthquake off the coast of Japan caused a tsunami that hit the Fukushima nuclear power plant. The 13 meter high wave flooded the generators that were providing power to the plant's cooling system. Now with no cooling system, the reactors began to overheat until three out of six of them entered a 
full blown meltdown. The radiation began pouring out of the facility and into the nearby sea. In total, it's thought that the level of radiation release was more than 100 times the amount than both of the nuclear bombs that were dropped on Japan at the end of World War II. An estimated 6 million people were exposed to this radiation. And this isn't just some sort of story from a history book either. Even as you watch this, Japan is still fighting to contain this horrific nuclear accident from harming life for hundreds of miles around. Thank you.